this video I'm going to assume that I'm 10 years old, it's Christmas Day and I've just unwrapped this present. I'm very excited, it's a new electronics kit and um, it's got uh, 15 fascinating experiments and uh, I've had my Christmas dinner so I'm now going to tear into this and uh, see if I can build something that actually works. So let's get the box opened, see what's inside. Okay, so we've got uh, a nice colour manual for me to have a read through. I can start learning about electronics, experiments, circuits, components to play with. And uh, I'm going to jump in at the deep end and uh, see if I can build a medium range radio receiver. So this is a fairly complicated build, uh, but I think all the parts I need for it are in the box. We need both of the breadboards, so I'll start by putting those together. So they just lift out. I don't know if all the bits are in this, I'm hoping that uh, enough of the bits are present. And uh, we'll assemble this as it's uh, shown in here. So we've got a parts list. So all the bits that should be in there. And um, these cards are the circuit experiment cards so we just find the one that we want so we're looking for number 13 okay so that's number 13 and uh, we need to get the two breadboards assembled as shown here so we have this one on the left this one the other way around on the right and then we should have a piece of plastic to join them. Should be two of these but one's missing um, but one should be enough to hold them together if I'm careful. And then okay so we've got those joined together. Next thing we can do we can either put the card on top of the breadboard and then you can kind of put the components through it uh, or you can just use it as a reference. So I'm just going to use it as a reference and going back to the instruction book the first thing we have to do with this build is wind the coil. So we need the coil former, which is this, and then some enameled copper wire. And uh, we just need to wind it as indicated in the manual. So I'll do that. Looks like all the wires actually here. So I don't think anyone's ever actually done this. So. Um, I'll get this wound and then we'll carry on. Okay, I wound the coil as it showed me in the manual. Follow the instructions very carefully. And what I can do now is plug that into this position on the left-hand breadboard. So I'm referring to the build card here. So we've done the coil. We can move on to the next page. The next thing I have to do is fit the terminals for the coil and then I can attach those to the breadboard and we can start fitting the electronic components. So luckily these parts are also present. So I'll fit those as it shows here and I can then get the coil attached. So it's looking promising so far. So we've got uh, all the parts were required up to this point. Okay, I have all the coil terminations connected to the breadboard. All the screws are present in the kit, so that's quite nice. And um, we can now move on and start fitting some electronic components. So looking at the instructions. So the next thing we have to fit apparently is the potentiometer. And it appears that goes in this position. Okay, at this point what we should do is put the uh, battery holder uh, into the breadboard. Unfortunately the contacts are fairly badly uh, corroded. I think there were some batteries left in it at uh, some point. Um, so I'll hook it up to the bench supply for now. I'll try and clean these off at some point and um, see if I can get them serviceable again. Uh, but for now we'll just use the bench supply to power it. 
Okay, so the next thing is I need to uh, fit the core to the coil. So somewhere in here, there should be a ferrite core there. And there's even a small tool in the kit for fitting this. And that just screws into the plastic foreman. So I'll leave it there for now. And uh, the next thing is just to follow through and um, wire up the, um, the circuit as it's shown in the manual and uh, also on the overlay card. Some of these uh, items, as it explains in the text, are uh, optional. These are for tuning the frequency. Um, but all I'm going to do now is work my way through. We've got the two transistors and the rest of the components. Uh, someone did take the time and trouble to put the labels on. Uh, we don't really need those, but I'm going to leave them on um, just to keep the uh, authenticity of the kit. I don't want to destroy anything if I can help it. Um, but for now, the next thing is we'll get all the components fitted and uh, see if we can uh, get this to work. So we'll start by putting the transistors uh, into the breadboards. So one goes here. And the other one over on this side. Now, of course, with this being so old, I might get some problems with uh, corrosion in the contacts, but um, we'll come back to that later, uh, depending on what it does. Uh, so I'll go through, I'll get the rest of the parts fitted, and um, we'll see if we can get a working radio. Okay, well I think I have all the parts in the right place that need to be fitted. I've checked it against the overlay and everything seems to be correct. What I'm going to do now is hook it up to the bench supply. As I said, the contacts for the uh, original are too badly corroded. So we have positive up in this corner and then negative down here. So I'll just hook that up and it takes three AA cells or should take three uh, AA cells, so I'll just set the supply to four and a half volts. Okay, I have the supply set to four and a half volts. I'll switch it on. I'll see if I can hear anything in the earpiece. Just getting a crackle when I turn the pot, so I'm now going to hook up an aerial and uh, a ground and see if we can receive anything. Okay, so I've got a good ground attached, I've got an antenna attached and I've been tinkering with the tuning and uh, I can now actually hear a radio station. Now of course you can't hear it because uh, my microphone won't pick up what's on this earpiece. So as I did with the crystal radio I showed recently, I've got it hooked up to an audio amplifier, so I'll get that powered up. And I'll place the microphone close to the speaker and hopefully you'll be able to hear the radio station. And I objected to the name really vociferously saying, look, the, the vast majority of people in bad debt, it isn't about spending. It's usually about change of circumstance. You know, whether you lose your job or you lose your partner, uh, you know, somebody dies, your mental health goes wrong. But no, it was, you know, they, they commissioned it based on the title and I wasn't, didn't have the power I do now, anyhow, yeah. to really object. And, and now I would have just said I ain't doing the program, uh, if you call it that. And on the back of that, I got a very angry message from somebody who got in touch with me to say, I'm so... So, as you can hear, it's coming through very clearly. I can pick up a number of stations with this. I'll just turn the amplifier off so you can hear me. Um, I can pick up quite a number of radio stations with this. Uh, you would have been able to pick up far more back when uh, this would have been new. And so, on Christmas Day, having uh, something like this would have been a fantastic 
uh, present. Uh, a lot of fun and this has just been putting it together uh, for the first circuit and obviously from this point what I would have done is go through, start messing with all the uh, settings, component values. The manual is extremely good, it's got some very detailed explanations as to how all these circuits work and at the back there are some more fundamental um, information about how various circuits work, how the transistor works and um, it really was um, a good way to learn electronics. This is, uh, although it looks um, archaic uh, and it is, uh, this is still as far as I'm concerned one of the best ways to learn electronics Something like this, it's um, extremely informative. You tend not to get this sort of detail in modern kits. They are more at um, just getting the things built as quickly as possible, making them do what they're supposed to do, but they rarely go into a lot of detail about how they actually work. So something like this is a really good learning tool. Uh, interesting warning down here. Um, warning, radiators and metal pipes make good earth connections but do not put the wire into the earth connection of electric sockets. I wonder why not, I'll be trying that next. Um, okay, so that's it, just a bit of fun and um, I've never had one of these um, back in the day but uh, finally I've got one half a century late but um, it's still a lot of fun.